Solo lawn care part-time lawn care business. Today we're going to talk about three elements um, that comprise the one-man operation of taking care of people's properties for profit. Uh, my name is Daryl. This is Planner Project. Thanks for joining us. I'm your guide, never your expert. And today we're going to focus on three aspects of some of the things that go into running from scratch, starting at zero, to the things that you're gonna encounter while you're out there and growing your business and things to avoid. So if that's interesting to you, stick around. I've got some tried and true information that I think will benefit you on your journey. If you're just starting out with your first client, you haven't even started yet, this is gonna be value to you. If you're at your 40 or 50 client uh, mark, this is gonna be some value to you. Um, I, and uh, it worked for me and uh, you can tweak it for you, but um, even if you go, which I recommend uh, pound for pound, point for point, it's going to be a benefit to you. Um, down in the description, I got a free download that kind of goes over some of this stuff and, and kind of has my philosophy of how you can be very profitable at just a one person operation is probably um, different than what you would expect. It's not the amount of clients you have but what you offer each individual client. And that is the attention to detail, creating that and maintaining and cultivating that relationship with your client. Because in the end, it all comes down to um, your relationship. Uh, big business is relationships. So um, back up a little bit on a small scale. Um, once you have that know, like, and trust, and you have that inner um, communication skills and um, um, speaking with um, the client and offering them services, key offering them, letting them know the service, additional services that you can offer. This leads to more revenue, more profits for you as you um, continue to add clients or as you continue to service that particular property. So before we get into all that, <clears throat> I want to first talk about um, some of the expenses and why this, if you can pull back the reins on getting caught up and having the latest and greatest and the widest and the biggest, and the baddest um, equipment. If you just focus on what you have and if you don't already have your, your mower, your edger, your weed eater, your blower, whatever, I would say those are the bare essentials. Um, I started off with a 21 inch push mower. Um, I was able to pick that thing up and put it in my truck on a day to day basis. I know I could have used ramps, but I mean, this thing was that small. Um, and it, uh, I had a, a edger, I had a, um, a weed eater, and I had a handheld blower, and I had a, a rake. And that's how I started. That's how I ran it for a long time. And um, I didn't realize the value of that till later on down the road when I got in, got caught up in that bigger is better mentality that I geared back down and I look at it now. And this is one of those things where I tell you, don't get caught up in all that because you can do so much with just that. It's not the equipment per se, it's the attention to detail and what you can do with that equipment. Um, so gear back, pull back the reins on getting caught up in that. You want to keep overhead low in your equipment, in uh, payroll, in labor, in your storage costs for your equipment. Say you can't store the equipment at your house. I was running my business out of my house, but I know there's plenty of people who don't have that availability, don't have a garage, or maybe they got an HOA that doesn't allow them to keep the equipment. So now you're having to store it somewhere for 200 bucks or a thousand bucks a month cut that out. You start getting bigger equipment, you can't keep it in your driveway and for security reasons, you've got to rent something or you have to buy the bigger trailer to lock it up. And um, so look at, uh, I'm trying to tell you this to like forecast it that it's not always the best um, option for you. If you keep it small, you can avoid those costs, those, like I said, these overhead expenses that take away from your profits, your, your monthly um, revenue. So it's, you know, kind of stay away from that. Um, number two, um, the part time, um, sometimes it comes with, and I know I was caught up in that. It comes with a kind of a, a negative connotation, like, oh, he only does it part time. I was doing a part time, but I was offering really good detailed work. And I encourage you don't, don't look at that as that's a, that that should be a hindrance to you that you're only operating at a part time, flip the script and you're doing it part time for the reason of, well, first off, everybody starts out part time. Everyone starts with one particular piece of property, unless they bought into a franchise or bought somebody's clients off of them, which if you've never run a business, I don't think that's the best um, avenue for you. Starting off, cutting your teeth and figuring out what you're really good at and what you need to improve on 
um, with one with one client, um, that's part time. And again, I'd say probably 95% of people that's how they start out. I in included. So part time um, um, is not your Monday through Friday or your doing through Saturdays and I never worked a week. I can't say I never worked weekends, but that was not part of the deal. I did not want to work weekends. I started this business so I could um, have more money for my family to do the things that me and my family enjoyed. So um, I worked shift work, so on my days off, I would go in and cut properties. If you're the person who works shift work, well, you have days you can go and cut properties or you have, you say you do a nine to five. There's probably some daylight hours when you come home that you can go and do these properties or maybe you're doing a weekend. You're going to have to give up something. You may have to do weekends. Um, this <laughs> newsflash, this is not going to be easy work. You're going to have to make it work. Maybe I'm the first person to tell you that this, this isn't, um, you know, just, you know, I dream a genie and everything's in, uh, money's going to start flowing in your pocket. You're going to have to give up something, but enjoy it. And I'm telling you these things up front. So you, you, you don't run into these um, problems, these overhead, these cash flow problems later on, you're going to be giving up something. So I would come off duty and, and go and take care of um, these properties. Um, I'd work one day and I'm, I was off two days. So I'd go and take care of these properties, but then I would have off weekends, okay? So um, um, you are probably gonna be in the same situation. So you gotta figure out the time when you're gonna do this. And don't think you have to have like 50 accounts. Again, one property, what's under my feet, you're gonna do the edging, you're gonna do the cutting, you're gonna do the, <clears throat> the weed eating, you're gonna do the blowing. Those are the essentials. Those are your basically four food groups as I call them. Anything after that it generates more money, okay? That's the attention. But you're not gonna get that work. Maybe I'm going ahead a little bit, but you're not gonna get that work if you're not consistently doing it and you're not doing it to detail. So if you're gonna spend the time of creating this business, you put your name on it, you get your nice um, outfit that separates you from all the other um, Joe Blows out there, you're not gonna be out there in jeans and a t-shirt. Spend some money on some Dickies or um, you know a nice you know button-down shirt or something, something that's gonna set you apart. You're not out there you're not some um, doctor by any means or dressing like a doctor, excuse me, but you're not going to be out there um, looking like, you know, you just rolled out, you know, out of some garage or underneath a car. You're going to set yourself apart. And that's, that's, we can talk about that later, but that's, that's a really good way to set yourself apart. What is everyone else doing? You want to be a little bit opposite of that. Not a little bit. You want to be a lot opposite of that. Present, be presentable. You know, when you show up and you talk to people, don't be a, you know, a, a, a smash, you know, bag of, of of potatoes you want to look presentable you want to look professional you're offering professional services you're doing attention to detail you're separating yourself from all these other guys that are in the neighborhood um, that are doing the properties boom 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 that doesn't pay what pays is your time is valid and additional services I'm getting a little sidetracked here but um, part-time um, what um, you, you've got your schedule it gives you the flexibility to what you, um, of, of when you're gonna work it. you can shut it down you know, for a few days um, to go and do family stuff and then get right back on it. I don't suggest taking off two weeks. If you're taking off two weeks, um, you're going to be talking with the client of, hey, prior to, hey, this is what's going on. You're going to have to have that conversation with them. I was on the properties every week. Yeah, did I take vacation? Sure. But I was able, I presented expectations or what the client could, could, um, could expect from me while I was stepping away for a few days. Um, so they're not shocked. They're not blowing up my phone, especially when I'm on vacation. Go, hey, what, what happened to my property? You know, so um, a little bit of uh, scheduling and communicating goes a long, long way. But um, again, don't look at part time as a negative thing. It allows you the flexibility and the freedom to do the things that you want to do. You're making making some extra coin and you're able to um, control your schedule. OK, and um, the third thing is and this is kind of a myth is, well, I've got. Uh, you know, you say you have 10 clients and they're a hundred dollars, which a hundred bucks is way too low of what you should be. That's not the client that, that I'm telling you to go look for. And we can talk about that. And there's other videos about um, what kind of clients you want to look for. But let's just for simple math, look at 10 clients and they're giving you a hundred dollars a month for their properties. You're on their property four times a month. That's a thousand dollars a month. Okay. In six months I come to you and you're like, yeah, I'm still making a thousand dollars a month. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. You literally have potential opportunity underneath your feet while you're on these properties you should be looking for five things all the time while you're on that property every single week that you could enhance that property okay you come up with five things you create a time you see the, um, the client say what's the anderson's hey miss anderson so you're rolling up 
um, hey, I see that some things need to be done. I'd like to put together, you know, um, uh, an estimate for you. Um, when, when is a good time we could get together so we could enhance your property? You don't even have to say enhance. That's not even a word that, that rolls off the tip of your tongue. These things need to be done. These are the services that I could do. Would you be interested? Boom. There's, they, you give them five, they take three. Boom. You've got a, a, a surge of additional revenue or profits in your, in your business. Um, um, on that one particular property. But if you're just walking around and doing the, you know, the four things of cut, edge, weed, eat, and blow, you're never gonna uh, um, max out that piece of property, okay? So look at you, while you're on that property, look at things you could do, you know, simple things, add sod, take away sod, add mulch, take away mulch, clean out beds, mechanical um, weed pulling, pruning this, pruning that, you know, there's all kinds of things that you could be doing. Um, again, that doesn't come unless you're doing attention to detail, you're showing up, you're being professional, you're being beyond professional, you're being detailed, okay? Um, but those are, those are opportunities right underneath you. Most people are looking at, um, oh, how many more clients can I, can I get? Don't do that. The money is in the services, the, the uh, showing up every single week, that's a guarantee. So I'd rather 10 clients that I'm there and offering additional services than a hundred clients. Cause I guarantee you, I'm gonna make more money off those 10 clients than say someone who's got multiple, multiple yards. They're just bang, bang, banging them out. That wasn't me. I'd rather provide my skill, my, my attention and detail and get paid um, very handsomely for it. than again, adding all those clients. Okay. So you gotta have a balance, but start with those 10 and max those out and then go from your 10 to your 20, your 20 to your 30 or wherever you are, okay? Until those are maxed out and you get a feel if this, if this client wants to spend money with you, if at six months and you've approached them, you know, a fair number of times, say two times on additional services, and they keep on giving you the eh, it may be time to start looking at who I can replace that. Because there's clients out there that are like that. They're just gonna pay you for the bare necessities. And then you're gonna have the clients who want things done to their property to keep up. To, um, to look better than their neighbor to, um, you know, get a, get a, um, their, their property looking, you know, um, on point and looking nice and for holidays, for seasons, uh, change out of se uh, seasonal, um, plants and what have you. So be that, be that operation, that part-time operation that offers those services before you go look at adding more and more and more and more clients. It's, it's not going to pay off for you. Um, and you're, and then you only have so much time. So, um, I'd rather get paid more um, per property than having a whole bunch of clients. The math just works out um, a lot better for you that way. So um, back up a little bit. Um, the number one thing is keep your um, expenses low. Look at how you can just, what you have, what you can do with it. A lot of it is just a lot of elbow grease and um, um, recognizing things that need to be done. Um, but uh, keep your expenses low, all that overhead stuff. Um, don't be, don't, don't get all bent out of shape or look down upon yourself because you're running a part-time business. You only have so much time, you know, you're human. And um, the third thing is there's, I just gave you ways of, as you're walking the properties, you're maintaining the property, how you can boost your revenue for those properties. Start looking for things that you can do for that particular um, client, okay? And um, just kind of like a bonus thing is that, remember, when you're on that property, from the time you pull up, the way you park, um, the way you present yourself, not only is the client possibly looking out the blinds at you, but the people across the street, they may have just moved in. They may be looking for a new service. Um, you never know. They may be looking to refer somebody down the street um, for a new service. Be that company, be that business that they, hey, I don't know who you have, but this guy, he rolls her trash cans up. He takes the paper up to the door. He's very friendly. He waves to me. I know him on a first name basis. Be human. And that's who you want to align yourself with anyways. You want to have that relationship. So when you are out in public in that, in that general neighborhood, you see these people. Hey, how you doing, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson? Um, good to see you. I'll, I'll see you this week on the property. Once you have that, they'll never, ever, ever leave you. Okay? And that's just the right thing to do. You treat people how you want to be treated. So. Again, I hope this helps. Um, if you want some more information, go down to the link in the description. I got something quick to download. We can kind of give you a, a mind frame of different things that you can think about as you're out there just starting out or as you're looking to grow your business and grow revenue. Um, again, um, like, subscribe, leave me some comments and things that you have questions on. Reach out to me. Um, I totally 
thank you for your time. Um, I hope you'll come back and, and um, watch some more of these videos. If I can answer any of your questions, let, let, me, let me be that, that source for you. Um, again, this is Daryl with Planner Project. Thanks for joining me, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.